I'm going to record this. I don't know if I'll ever use this, but um, I am on almost almost eight weeks pregnant. Nobody knows, and that's a tough part too because I have 24-hour nausea, headache, and feel utterly exhausted and weak to the point where walking upstairs the whole time not just like once a day but anytime it makes me like shake a bit and feel like I need to sit down so I'm doing my emails in bed right now because none of my team know I am so grateful and thrilled to be pregnant again and desperately wanted to be but my God, when I was pregnant with Honor, the first trimester was really hard because I had this 24 hours um, nausea. So I don't actually throw up, but I kind of want to because I think it would just at least clear it. And my doctor said it's quite rare that you don't get a break. You know, a lot of morning sickness is the most bullshit word ever because um, it's not just in the morning for most women, but most women do get a sort of time of the day when it's worse and time of day when it's better. Whereas for me, I literally wake up at three in the morning and I want to throw up. So it's quite hard to stay positive and excited about anything. I am like pushing through each day and sorry, I know it sounds pathetic and probably I'll watch this back when I don't have it anymore and be like, but when you're in it, my God, I will be so grateful to not feel this. And it's just, it's unbelievable to think that it's the power of something the size, not even the size of a raspberry yet. <laughs> I know it's, I think it's the HCG hormone that does it. And everyone says that means it's a girl, but who knows? Anyway, just trying to concentrate or do anything. It's a bloody nightmare. I don't know if you guys, anyone can sort of empathize. And if you are going through it, I really feel for you. Especially the other thing is because it's so early on, most people don't tell anyone till 12 weeks because it's safer. And so you're kind of just pretending that you're fine. Anyway, there is nothing I want to eat. Nothing, nothing seems good. So I just kind of force stuff, carby stuff down. But um, I'm holding my nose in every room, like detergent stinks, the fridge stinks. I've had to get rid of every scented candle in the house at the moment, put them in a drawer and can't, smell Mackenzie's cologne Ugh. my perfume there's only one that doesn't make me want to throw up so I'm wearing that and yes I'm a barrel of laughs <laughs> sitting in bed in a beanie oh. anyway I will update more soon but I'm counting down the days till I hit week 12 which is when it hopefully it'll stop it did last time and then it came back in the third trimester but I don't think it was quite as bad. And if anyone's saying, oh, you can take medication, I tried that last time. I had one pill and it was like a sleeping pill to me. I couldn't even open my eyes or let alone drive a car or anything. So that didn't work. So anyway, like I said, I'm super grateful. This is a means to an end and um, I will check back in soon. Ciao. Hi guys, so another update. I am 11 and a bit weeks pregnant now. Still feeling, oh my God, my shoulders look absolutely enormous. <laughs> still feeling utterly awful. Um, like still got 24 seven nausea and um, I don't really want to eat anything. So I'm just forcing stuff down. And uh, the fatigue is like, the worst I've ever experienced. So I kind of have a couple of hours in the morning when I can get things done or, or go on a walk. I haven't exercised at all, which I think in turn makes me feel lower because I'm not getting energy or endorphins. We're also, the UK is in a full on lockdown at the moment, so we can't see people. And um, I think, I, you know, rarely feel this negative actually. And I, um, I'm trying to rationalise and realise that hopefully soon I'll feel better physically, which will hopefully help the mental side. Um, but I guess, you know, a lot of people are feeling pretty low right now and um, 
I am, don't get me wrong, I really don't want this to come across as a big old whinge. I am really grateful to be pregnant, grateful to have shelter over our head and, you know, food to eat and everything. But um, I'm just sharing how, you know, trying to be as honest as possible. Um, I think not telling people is actually, it's got to that stage where I kind of want to now. Last time we waited till 12 weeks to tell our nearest and dearest and I really, really want to soon because I think it might sort of explain, like I, I think, you know, my dad said, oh, I'm really worried about you because you seem really low and things like that. So I don't want them to worry too much. And um, it's getting colder and wintry, so there's sort of less you can do in the day. But I think if I start to feel better next week, the first thing I want to do more of is exercise. Um, I've tried to do stretching every day, but I just haven't had the energy. I get really lightheaded and head rush if I um, honestly do anything like go up the stairs. So I haven't tried to do any uh, home workouts or anything like that. Um, but that's one of the first things I'd really like to do. Um, but yes, so this is my joyful <laughs> update. Hopefully next time um, there'll be fun meals to make and um, we will find out the sex of the baby either this week or next. So that's exciting. I've had that test done. Um, and I'm pretty convinced it's a boy. I don't know, my last scan, I say he, was wriggling around like crazy and did a big jump, which was really funny to see. Because even at this age, you think they're not a proper, you know, they don't look like a human being yet, but it did. Anyway, see you guys soon. I'm trying on jeans, my own jeans. And um, last pregnancy, I think I was, I didn't go into maternity jeans till quite late. I think 20 weeks or so. Not that it matters, but they do say that you, sh I'm out of breath from trying them on, that you show so much earlier in your second pregnancy. And it's so true. So I'm, I was, I'm just 12 weeks and I, let me show you. Look at that. I'm, I mean, to me that looks massive. I'm sure in a few weeks that will feel tiny, but so I, these are normal jeans, which I can do up, but I've just had to try on about five pairs to find a pair that works. I have to say the in-betweeny stage when you don't quite look pregnant yet and nobody knows is really hard to dress because A, you're trying to hide it and B, I can't quite embrace the bump yet with like pretty, um, bodycon dresses and things. <laughs> so, <laughs> you just look a bit funny. Anyway, that was me laughing. So yes, I'm feeling a bit better, which is really nice. I'm still super tired, but I managed to go on a walk yesterday and do a little 15 minute stretch class online, which did me the world of good and not nap. Hi guys. I haven't vlogged for ages, um, but I am, or we are, off to my 20 week scan. So that means I'm halfway and I'm actually really excited to have reached that milestone and I feel so much better than when I previously filmed. I don't have nausea anymore. I haven't since I think about 12 or 13 weeks. My energy is a lot higher and I've actually managed to do little online workouts for about half an hour pretty much every morning and go on walks which we are in our third lockdown in the UK right now um, COVID is rampant like worse than it's ever been sadly um, and that means we can't go anywhere we can literally just go for walks and in January it's bloody freezing so it's a pretty bleak time but then at the same time I think well kind of a good time to be pregnant let's just you know make the baby last time around so different I was having to count hours on planes because I had so many work trips when I was carrying honor and you're not supposed to fly very much when you're pregnant there's a sort of unofficial limit on hours you should be in the air because of the pressure and uh, the more I read about it the more scared I got so it was the complete opposite now I'm not certainly not worrying about flights I'm on more, more worried about COVID and being careful for that um, Mackenzie is not allowed into the hospital with me for the scans which actually really bums me out because I still get nervous about them and it's a nice thing to see the baby on the screen and hear the 
heartbeat and it's just really sad that he's missing that um but they terrify you by saying husband needs to or partner needs to stay nearby in case we need to get them in quickly to tell you bad news so it's really nice to have that on the back of your mind as well <laughs> but hopefully by the time I give birth in May things will be a lot better because the vaccines are now being rolled out and um, he will be allowed in for the birth because I've had a couple of friends give birth very recently and their husband had to leave after one was one hour and one was three hours which I just couldn't handle I really really hope that's not what we have to face um, I, I do think as much as I feel very very grateful and supportive for the you know our NHS and the pressure they're under one thing I just cannot abide by is having to give birth alone and luckily this is my second so I do vaguely know what to expect but it's really different each child and it's really different being in the UK versus America it's completely different so um you know, you have, you have a midwife, you don't know who that is. Um, you, in America, you have your doctor and you know exactly who's gonna be delivering your baby. But here, you don't, and that scares me a bit. Anyway, um, this was supposed to be a really positive message, not a negative one. I'm super happy and um, just really glad that I'm halfway. Everything else is good, it's actually Honor's birthday today, so. Um, we are throwing her a little party just for us and um, my mother-in-law who's with us at the moment but she will love it and she's three I can't believe it anyway we're at the hospital now so peace out Woo! so number two yes you excited I'm excited and nervous. you're quite scared aren't you yeah because I would say to the this is how I said to the boys right you got to you set up a business. The business is really hard to set up, and it's a struggle. You get it going. So it's a coffee shop. You get it going. The customers are coming back. They're loving your coffee beans. They're loving your brownie. Everything's good. It's getting easier and easier. You start working three days a week instead of seven days a week. You then have a manager in place. I love That's your a nanny metaphors. and childcare. And you just sort of everything's pretty easy. The the, the child, well, the business you is start getting, sleeping. You start getting sleep. Get a routine. The, the child, the except, business, it talks to you. Except when you're pregnant. Everything's then easier. Then you stop, stop the sleeping out. And then you decide out of nowhere, even though you're making a lot of money and everything's good in your life, to do it again and open up a second coffee shop. I have a second kid. And then you go back to ground zero and you have to start again. You have to go reapply for a mortgage, find a property. You have to oh go... Sorry about this, guys. But it's true. <clears throat> it's giving you a headache. It's giving you anxiety, though, because right. it's giving me. So you're, you're... Excited about my second coffee shop. You really sound <laughs> it. But worried about not sleeping for six months. Can you oh, not... my God. Can you not remember what it was like? Yes, but I'm the one that breastfeeds. It is so crazy how men moan about... You breastfeed, you're like, babe, bring the baby over here. <laughs> men moan about... Men go, sorry oh, to men. the men watching, but oh. the amount of husbands who are like, yeah, I think we'll have another baby. Or why don't we just have four kids? I'm like, you're not the one that has to like, oh, hon, I get be put through pregnant. It. I get put through it. <laughs> Trust me. This was not how this chat was meant to go. <laughs> I'm not like a 6 a.m. in the morning, late as both. Can you, you can so, Work until seven, I'll be at the pub and then I'll so, see you at eight. No, you're very hands on, but let's be real. The first few weeks and months, Mm -hmm. uh, if you are breastfeeding, the mother <laughs> is the only person that can do all those things through the night. Yes, you can help. So why am I always up? Why in my head was I up so much? I'm shouting in the first you, I'm right here. <laughs> um, anyway, I. It's funny because the, if this vlog right now was if we were first time parents we'd be like oh my god we're so excited <laughs> we sound was, uh, so jaded who was the article that you we're read really out to in the car excited. what's his face the actor no let's make this more popular what did he say oh yes it was dan stevens the um did he have the beast? beaten beast and cousin matthew from downton abbey and he's got like four kids or something crazy and he said um it's nuts because everyone does it all the time. It's such a daily normal thing. Everyone's, you know, many, many people have kids. And yet, when you're in the thick of it, you're like, how does everyone do this? This is crazy, this is mad. Why? Um, I think we should end this on a positive note. Um, it's actually not you, too bad. It is you, what it is. They are quite fun. Oh my God, we've got the best kid in the world.
the world. She's a legend. Yeah. Honor is has got the biggest sense of humor. She's hugely empathetic, meaning she's just very just affectionate and caring and cares about people she doesn't even know. If she sees a kid crying, she it's gets what upset. It is. And uh, a dog or a kid. You're not coming across that well. He's only joking. He loves you're the best dad. You love being a dad. You absolutely just, love I've it. I've got some bread, bread bacon right now. Anyway, um, we'll presume that we have announced the, and we're not the gender. We could be divorced by the time and, this goes um, out. And it's another little girl, which I am so excited about having two little girls. And you, it just cracks me up because you are father of daughters. Yeah. Women Mother everywhere. Of which is really funny because you're you've got three brothers, so you were brought up entirely by around boys. And now it's almost like your comeuppance is to have women everywhere. They say that the biggest players always end up with girls. Oh my god. 